You are listening to Master's Decoded podcast series. I'm your host and the chief decoder, Anis Merchant. Through this podcast, I bring in guests who are successful in a different walk of life to decode and map out their careers and journeys with the hope that we gain all our learnings. The world around us is changing exponentially and how the impact of artificial intelligence, technology and other socio-economic factors have either influenced or enhanced my guest careers. In today's podcast, I have invited Sarah St. John. Sarah is an entrepreneur, podcaster, author, animal lover and world traveler. Over the years, she has created several startups throughout her entrepreneurial career of over a decade. She has developed a unique proposition where she preaches on how you can set up and run a business for less than $5 per month. Through her books, blogs and podcasts, Sarah's goal is to show people how to launch and manage an online business on a budget. Today's podcast reveals inside secrets and tools to the podcasting world and I hope it excites and motivates you to start your own podcast. Without much further ado, let me get on with it. Hi Sarah, welcome to Master's Decoded podcast series. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for taking time out. I know you are a podcaster yourself uh, and I'm sure you have a lot of podcasts arranged, planning, and I know what it all gets into doing something like that. So, you know, before we get into knowing more about you, what got you started with your podcast? So, okay, so going back, I started my entrepreneurial journey um, over a decade ago. I started in photography okay. and, uh, and, and, and I realized that while I like taking photos of uh, animals and landscapes and architecture, I didn't really like taking photos of people and I was doing like weddings. Like- but that's where the money is is weddings and stuff but an even bigger issue was just the upkeep and expense of and maintenance Mm -hmm. of camera equipment so I wanted to switch to an online business model so I tried different things like drop shipping affiliate marketing uh, print on demand t-shirts and just all these different things And it was in the process of learning like the tools and resources to use to run a business for free or on a budget that I got the idea of writing a book called Frugalpreneur. Well, while while I was writing the book, I was like, well, I should launch a podcast too to coincide with the book uh, kind of as a marketing tactic, I Mm -hmm. guess. And it was just going to be, you know, 10 episodes or something like that. Um, where I interviewed the different founders of some of the tools I recommended in the book. Well, I enjoyed it so much and I I was getting more leverage from the podcast than from the book even that, yeah, and making connections and things like that. So I was like, oh man, maybe I just need to stick with this podcasting thing. So as of the time of this recording, I believe I have like 63 episodes. Um, and so definitely more than was planned. And, and now I'm kind of doing all things podcasting. Like I started a podcast production agency because um, nice. I was doing my own editing mm-hmm. and production. So I thought, why not start, why not get paid to do it for other people you know, sure. something that I do for myself. And that's podseam.com. And then I was like, when I was learning about podcasting, there wasn't at that time really a centralized place where people could go to find the different tools and resources and education on podcasting. So then I thought, oh, I should start a directory. So I have podcast resource directory.com, which is just like a, a directory of different tools and resources. And now I'm working on a, well, I just came out with a book this week called Podcastpreneur. Okay. And I'm, <laughs> I'm also working on a course about podcasting. So now I'm, I'm doing like all things podcasting, but it's funny because it started as just the initial plan was just the short term podcast to help promote my first book. But then now I'm basically just doing 
all types of podcasting related things. <laughs> so you're a pro now uh, in <laughs> podcasting. If you're writing a book, you have a course, you have a directory, you have so many things going on. Mm-hmm. Do you still continue with your dropship, affiliate marketing, your frugalpreneur concepts? Do you still continue with that or is it done? Um, well, I do some affiliate marketing like through podcasting. Uh, okay. Um, and I do still have a dropshipping business technically, but I don't really do anything with it. Like I don't promote it or, you know. Mm. Uh, so... Yeah, so pro- primarily podcasting, and I'm still doing the Frugalpreneur podcast. Like that's my podcast. But as far as businesses and and income mm-hmm. go, it's more podcast related things. Yeah, I didn't know there was a business actually around podcasts, so I should <laughs> consider something. Uh, but anyways, uh, talking a little bit about what got you started to podcast. I think that's uh, critical because that became the foundation of where you are today, which is Frugalpreneur. And you actually wrote a book. So in your perspective, what is Frugalpreneur? Can you explain that concept? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was getting into online businesses, I was just always researching like, well, what types of online businesses can I do any of them for free or affordably on a tight budget? And I found all these different like tools and resources that help with that. And and I was actually taking a Dave Ramsey course um, mm-hmm. called uh, Financial Peace. And I was sitting in there one time and and he's talking about all these ways to save money and to pay down debt. And and I was thinking, okay, all these ideas are great, but what about making more money to help with that? Yeah. And and so for some reason, when I was sitting in there, the word frugalpreneur came to me. And I was like, hmm, I could write a book about the different things I've learned, which then turned into the podcast. Um, and basically, I have different people on the show who are in different areas of online businesses Mm -hmm. and whether it's drop shipping, affiliate marketing, self-publishing, podcasting, coaching, consulting, all these different things. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and basically I interviewed them and, or sometimes it'll be like the, the founder of a particular tool that I use and recommend. Um, and yeah, that's basically what, the concept is is just building a business on a budget or an online business anyway um and and how to operate it and the different options that there are out there for online businesses and all of that and now because of the pandemic online business has become so crucial right for organizations but there is something which you speak which is very unique and it caught my attention when I was doing a little bit of research about you on, and on your website, which is you can literally start a business with five dollars. Mm, right. Okay. So what is this like? What do I spend this five dollars on? And <laughs> so right. That's interesting. <laughs> so uh, for any online business, you obviously need a well. First, you need a domain name, which mm-hmm. you can get for just a dollar at one and one.com it's the number one and one.com mm-hmm. and it's like a dollar for your first year and then fifteen dollars for each year after that uh and then so you have your domain name and then you can get a free website through wordpress you do have to pay for the hosting which you can get for like three dollars a month mm-hmm. um and then uh, a logo which you could do for free in canva or or pay someone i suppose through um Five or for five, mm-hmm. yeah, for five dollars. Uh, and then starting an email list is important. Um, and there's a few companies that have a free option. Mm-hmm. The two that I recommend are Mailer Light because they have free up to I think it's a th- I think a thousand subscribers. And then um, Sendfox is a new one that's free up to like 3,000 subscribers and then each additional thousand subscribers it's like a one-time fee of ten dollars wow. um yeah and what i love about sendfox is 
especially for content creators like podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, is that you can put in your YouTube link or your blog or podcast RSS feed, and it'll automatically generate weekly newsletters with, wow. yeah, so it saves a lot of time. Um, and it sends those emails out with your latest episodes and, mm. uh, and it's free <laughs> up to yep. 3000. Yeah. And so, so those are the main things Like you could start with five bucks just by having a dollar domain, uh, a, a free website through WordPress, but then hosting is, you know, like $3 a month, um, on the very low end. And then, um, uh, getting a logo yeah free logo yeah free logo or for five dollars yeah so and and so you could get started for yeah probably five dollars and then i try to run my business for under a hundred dollars a month after that you know including like the podcast hosting and the wordpress hosting and um like the social media management and scheduling i use mm -hmm. crowd crowdfire yep um for that and that's like only 10 bucks a month and there's just so many tools out there that are a lot of them are free and or very very affordable and so yep. it makes it easy to run an online business cheaper than a coffee i would say Many <laughs> of these tools. yeah so, exactly yeah. <laughs> but you know today there are so many individuals who are thinking of starting their own business and they get stuck because there's too much of noise with these free tools, whether mm -hmm. like you just for email marketing, you spoke about two tools, Sandfox and the other one. Uh, and even for social or building your own website or domain, people just get lost. Like it just takes enormous amount of time to do the research. What should be my tech stack look like? What's mm -hmm. your advice to somebody going down that rabbit hole? How do they stay away from the noise? Yeah, exactly. And that's actually uh, one of the reasons I wrote Frugalpreneur is because it kind of breaks down like not only the different ways of making money online, but then once you decide what you want to do, the different tools that you need. Um, and so it's kind of more of a fast track. But yeah, as far as like um, technology stack, uh, you know, of course, the website, the email list, I recommend a, uh, a social media scheduling and management tool. Um, let's see what else. Obviously, if you're podcasting, you need a podcast host. Um, mm -hmm. If Let's see what else. And for podcasting, I also use repurpose.io mm -hmm. and Headliner. I actually use both of those um, for like audiograms and things like that. And let's see. Uh, oh, and then I, an, uh, oh, go I ahead. actually use no. I actually use many of these what you're just talking about. Oh, really? Likewise. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a big fan of uh, Headliner actually. What, yeah. What it does. Hmm. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and there's a lot of tools I used to use, but then. Like I keep condensing down to like just the bare minimum basically of, of the things. Um, obviously, if you're doing a podcast, you need some sort of editing tool or something to record in. Like you could use Zoom like we're using or Squadcast mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. edit with Audacity, which is free Ooh, or, yeah. or there's something so called... Too. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many that, oh, yeah. Descript I use as well, which that makes your transcripts, but then in addition, you can edit with it because you can edit the audio by editing the uh, the transcript. Yeah. So you can like, in one click, you can take out ums and uhs and all of that stuff. So I use that. That's like 15 a month. Um, but yeah, so there's not that many tools I use and the ones I do a lot of them are free or you know 10 15 bucks a month type of fee so hmm. I think what the message you're trying to share is also leverage technology to simplify your hmm. business 
and bring in automation also so that you as an individual can drive your business objectives rather than focusing on how do I manage each of these elements differently? Is that correct? That's what you're trying to leverage technology for. Yeah, definitely. For to save time, to, you know, like for example, with the CrowdFire social media to, um, management scheduling tool, I mean, I could spend, go in there and schedule out a whole month or a whole year, technically, I mean, however long, worth of content in a day, you know, an hour or a few hours. And it just saves so much more time because, well, not just time, but like, then you don't even have to think about it. Yes. Uh, it it and, saves and, forgetting. <laughs> and it saves a lot of time because, you know, although these technologies help, but you need your own persona, you need your own business to shine to allow the listeners or your in a circle to appreciate who you literally are. So mm -hmm. these tools definitely help. But talking about one thing which you spoke on, which is mailing list. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody starting zero do not have any email. They only have their own email. How do they go about generating an email? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. getting emails because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best way to do it is to offer some sort of lead magnet. Um, there's some kind of free, like a free book or a free, PD, uh, a free cheat sheet or checklist or something like that. Um, and you could use like Facebook ads to, mm -hmm. to get people to go to that landing page and, and get mm -hmm. that. Um, or you could do... I, I mean, you wouldn't have to do paid ads. You could just post on social media and things like that. Um, or you could even do like a, I use King Sumo, which yeah. um, is another app Sumo product along with Sendfox that you can do like giveaways. You know, you, what I like to do is a monthly giveaway for books, like a monthly book. And so people sign up for the giveaway and, you know, only one person or whatever wins. Um, but then you grow your email list. Um, but it is recommended that when you do a giveaway, to give away something that's relevant to your niche. Audience. Yeah, your audience. Because like if you say, oh, free iPhone, well, everyone and their dog is going to sign up for that. I mean. <laughs> $1,000 worth of an iPhone for sure. Yeah. I mean, right. so to put up either your own products and services or something relevant to you. so like when I do the monthly books it's like entrepreneurial type of books um, okay. so yeah I would say a, a giveaway or um, a lead magnet those are I think the two best ways initially so you've been yourself living the life of a frugal printer and you've been also interviewing or having discussions with uh, who are also applying those frugal preneurship on their day-to-day -day basis. So what are the key learnings from your guests, which you have seen in the frugal preneur journey, which they have been mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. um, well, a lot of my guests are people that are already, have already established their, you know, business and whatnot. And, Mm -hmm. And they're in a different area within, like they might be in affiliate marketing, they might be in podcasting or self-publishing or like these different ways of making money online. Yep. So I interview more like, I guess you could call them experts, people who have already done it uh, and kind of their process and how they did it. Um. So, and, but some of them have been specifically about building a business on a budget. Okay. Uh, let's see. Christy Wright was one of those. Um, mm -hmm. She works for Dave Ramsey and uh, she was talking about building a business on a budget. And then I had like Nick Loper on from the side hustle show talking about the different ways, the different types of side hustles and online businesses you can have and, um, and things like that. And it's just, I like it because then I can learn from them. It's almost like you're getting a free one-on-one -on -one consultation in a way. <laughs> yeah. 
and I've been getting that as well through my podcast uh, because I've been getting people from variety of background. And today, I'm getting to learn from a fellow podcaster myself mm-hmm. about your journey as well. So mm-hmm. thank you for doing that. <laughs> uh, but, but when you talk about, uh, and I want to kind of hone in more on the entrepreneurship a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when people talk about budget, you know, and you know they may start with the budget. Let's say it's hundred dollars per month. Now to, you know, and there is always that point of achieving more, achieving more, mm-hmm. achieving more. And they think I have to put in more money to achieve more. Where is that balance where you strike, where you say you don't need to put more money, the business will self-sustain. What's that mm-hmm. break, breaking point or break even point as they say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend starting on a budget and my personal budget is a hundred a month, but it could be you know, for someone, it might be 10 a month for someone. It could be a thousand a month. I mean, I don't know what, what people's depends on mm-hmm. what they have to work with, but, um, and then, yeah, obviously as your business grows, your, your budget probably would then go up as well. Uh, because as you make more money, well, then you can increase your budget and do more ads or something like that. To And, and that's kind of actually where I'm at right now is uh, trying to, I haven't really done ads uh, okay. at all up to this point, but uh, I've started thinking I should probably increase my budget a little bit to do ads because then you know, then you get more business and, and continue to, cause the saying unfortunately is true that you have to say, or excuse me, spend money to make money to mm-hmm. a certain extent. Yeah. So, um, I, I would just say that as a business grows, as you start to profit more, you know, you can adjust that because at a certain point, if you're just using the budget that you started with, Mm-hmm. There's probably only so much you can do or so much growth before it kind of levels out. At a certain point, you do unfortunately have to start spending more money, primarily on, I would say, marketing. I don't think you necessarily need to spend more money on technology or management and those types of things, like the different tools necessarily, but more on marketing and advertising is I would say the main thing to increase and that's what I'm working on now is trying to figure out can I should I do 50 a month 100 a month you know on Facebook ads and things like that Mm -hmm. interesting (laughs) now uh, you know talking a little bit about the concepts which you spoke of and the areas where you really dabbled in when you started off with your online business which is drop shipping affiliate marketing now these are tried tested Many individuals today, you get to see these YouTube stories, $100,000 a month, $20,000 a day. That's the kind of money they make. But they don't talk about that probably it may go on for a year where you don't even make a money in this mm-hmm. space. Yeah. So Right, exactly. And, and if somebody's thinking of, oh, I looked at this video of dropshipping or affiliate, I should also do it. Is that easy today? Because these have been there for a long time now. Is that easy today in your perspective? Um, I think affiliate marketing is a good thing to just always be doing no matter what business model you have because there's always, um, like, I mean, I still use affiliate marketing if I'm recommending like a book or something like that. I'll link to it with the affiliate link. And of course you have to say that somewhere on your website like the footer or something like affiliate disclaimer um so i think affiliate marketing you could use in some way shape or form even if it's just like an amazon link Mm -hmm. to a book you know so i recommend that no matter what but uh, as far as like drop shipping um i mean i think people who make a lot of money with that they might be selling like higher ticket items like you know, grills and stuff like that, where the profit margin is really, really high, maybe Um, selling thousand dollar items. That's usually what I hear about when people say they make 20,000 a month or whatever it is. Um, The drop shipping that I've done has been 
I, it was a baby clothing, like onesies okay. and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm maybe making in profit five or ten dollars per onesie or per sale. Um, so I would have to sell a whole lot of them mm-hmm. to, you know, make. 20 grand a month or whatever so I, i'm pretty sure at least the ones i've heard about that are making that much are selling things that are much more expensive <laughs> but yeah with drop shipping you definitely need to pick a niche um mm-hmm. you can't be like amazon where you have anything and everything on your site so i picked baby clothing because my thought is you know people aren't likely to get it damaged so you don't have to it's not going to break i mean i suppose there could be something wrong with the stitching or something but um plus it's not less less of returns right yeah less returns and uh and the cost of shipping is next to nothing Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh and and things like that and so that's why plus i just thought the idea was kind of fun um so me personally i haven't made a whole lot from drop shipping in part because i haven't even really marketed it or advertised it It kind of Mm -hmm. more experimented with it i guess um so i suppose if i ran like facebook ads okay then you know maybe but when you're only selling something where you're making five or ten dollars each i mean to run ads to i don't know that's kind of (laughs) hard to know if it's worth it yeah not worth it at all yeah let's talk a little bit about your current you're doing a lot how Mm. do you manage your time because Mm. you're, you're running your own podcast you're doing editing for others you have services around now completely around the podcast ecosystem so how do you keep up with everything yeah and i actually currently still have a full-time day job (laughs) so okay (laughs) so i do all this stuff pretty much every evening when i get home and then on weekends so Mm -hmm. evening and weekends is pretty much all spent on um podcasting related things and so sometimes i feel like i'm always working but (laughs) <laughs> but someday the the goal though is that someday this is what I'll be doing full time and mm-hmm. it'll be much more manageable that way. <laughs> yes. So what's next for you Sarah? Like you're thinking of getting into this into full time? Is that what mm-hmm. it is? Yeah, so I'll continue the podcast of course and I think podcasting is good for you know people becoming familiar with you and mm-hmm like the front end of your funnel I guess you could say like people being aware of you and Mm -hmm. uh, getting to know like and trust you and things like that Uh, but then yeah I have the the podcast agency the and then I'm working on a course I'm hoping it'll be out before the end of the year but I mean with working a full-time job because I'll have to record a lot of videos and stuff I've so far I've just out outlined the course um so we'll see but yeah so i think podcast you know editing production and education i guess is where i will end up and continue to run the podcast as well as well great best of luck with that you know you've now been working for quite a while and Mm -hmm. you've been doing these businesses or side hustles i would say Mm -hmm. these are all these side hustles uh, if I give you a time machine, Sarah, right now and say, Sarah, I will give you this machine and you can go back Bef- when you probably came out of college and you say, okay, I can relive this. I know what I went through. Mm. Uh, would you do it the same way again or would you change a few things or probably crunch this entire time into a few things? Yeah. So yeah, if I could go back in time, knowing what I know now, the first thing I would do is actually start right outside of college instead of, I started in my mid twenties, the entrepreneurial. So um, I would have started a few years earlier and I would have not spent so much time with all these miscellaneous online businesses. And I, I mean, I guess I learned something from all of them and I had my hand in all of them and tried them out. Um, But I think 
I would have started podcasting because podcasting has actually been around for like 15 years Mm -hmm. and and it's just now in the past year or so gotten really popular but I think if I had started a podcast you know from the get-go in 2005 or whenever I just think how much further along would I be because like John Lee Dumas if you're familiar Mm -hmm. with him yep uh entrepreneurs on fire i mean i think he started in <clears throat> actually he didn't start until 2012 i think but even then um and because he was like the first i guess daily one of the podcast. few yeah. yeah about entrepreneurship so i just feel like if i had started hmm. my entrepreneurial journey right out of college started a podcast in well, that would be, I, I got out of college in like 2005. So, yeah, <laughs> I started a podcast around that time. Then I feel like I'd be so much further along and wouldn't have wasted so much time on all these other things. But I guess <laughs> hindsight is 2020. <laughs> yes. And 2020 is definitely a big hindsight for all of us today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's on how's it going. Um, and I'm sure all of us are wishing it gets over pretty quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, and the hindsight, you said you would have started it earlier, but today there are a lot of individuals and I do get a lot of calls, a lot of emails, you know, hey, we also want to start a podcast. So if somebody approaches you, what would your advice be to them? If they want to start a podcast? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the first step would actually probably be to read the book that I just came out with because it's, uh, it's it covers it's very short it's like 65 pages but it's really full of like it doesn't have a bunch of filler in it it gets to the point and it it tells you first of all why you should have a podcast especially if you run a business and how to start a podcast like the technology and the all the different the equipment and all that stuff but then it goes into podcast hosting and guesting mm-hmm. And like how to find guests, how to be on shows, things like that, and and just different tips. Um, and yeah, so I would start with that because that's hmm. uh, and actually all my books. Um, well, at the time of this recording, currently my first two books are on my website for free, but the th- podcastpreneur will. Before this goes live, it'll be on there as well, the PDF versions of all three books. Um, and that's going to be at thesarahstjohn.com forward slash free. Uh, but yeah, so you can get a free PDF version of that book. And that would be a good starting point. And then like podcastresourcedirectory.com has the different, like the different hosting platforms listed and just all the, the different editing tools and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm constantly adding to it. Um, and then, okay. yeah, so I would say, um, and then I would recommend getting a a mic. Uh, I use an ATR2100, um, but mm-hmm. there's also the Samsung Q2U. Both of those are like 60 or $80 or something like that. And, um, and then, of course, using like headphones or earbuds. So there's not the echo i guess coming out of yeah of a computer um and today even i for most of my podcast uh if i'm if i these both headsets they work good in both ways mm-hmm. uh, you have the noise cancellation so it takes away all the noises away from the room otherwise you have to invest in soundproofing and a lot of those aspects so it's mm-hmm. taken away it's expensive but it takes care of a lot of other things which you would need to take care of during your recording mm-hmm. uh, or editing i would say uh, right so, yeah. yeah yeah and you could i mean let's see the headphones i have i think are oh no i do have bose well i had yeah. sennheiser i think before but i mean you could get mm-hmm. i think you could probably get headphones for under 50 dollars now yep. like not maybe a name brand but you know, or you could even use your like Apple earbud things. Um, mm-hmm. Just anything where the the sound isn't coming out of the computer because then mm-hmm. you get the echo. Yep. 
That's interesting. And do you have a mentor whom you look up to in this journey? Uh, well, as far as podcasting, I mean, there's several people, John Lee Dumas, um, Pat Flynn, uh, Dave Jackson. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. Uh, Evo Terra, uh, Mark Asquith. Okay. There's a bunch that they, you know, they started their podcasting journey anywhere from, I think, 2005 to 2012 is kind of when they all started. And they're kind of like coaches, I guess, basically, and um, have mm. different podcast related like uh, memberships or companies and, and so I learned from them and their podcasts because they have podcast related podcasts and so mm -hmm. um yeah I would say all those I guess that's about, about five people maybe great great Pat Flynn is my favorite too and um, I don't know I don't know if you see his daily show which he's doing doing now mm -hmm. uh, where he's going live, there's so much of knowledge which he's open to share today, which is heartwarming. Um, yeah, I didn't he start that? I guess with COVID, when COVID hit, yes, is when that is correct. Yeah, I have, I subscribe to his YouTube channel, um, but I haven't had a chance to watch those yet because they're every day, and so it's like mm -hmm. it it builds up really fast. Um, yeah. So I have those to watch, but yeah, no, even <laughs> I I look at the ones which. Uh, specifically the ones which are of interest to me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pat is an expert in many areas, uh, mm -hmm. but specifically the ones which align to me, I will definitely have a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Podcasting and affiliate marketing. I, I love those two topics that he covers. <laughs> hmm. uh, no, I think Sarah, this, uh, this conversation has been very interesting. I'm sure a lot of people listening to today uh, on my show would be thrilled and you know, it's a very different one where I've got a co-podcaster who's actually uh, never, this is the first time, so you're my first guest who's a podcaster herself. Oh, okay. uh, so uh, I'm sure people would have learned a lot from you today. So thank you mm -hmm. for your time. Uh, oh. Really appreciate you sharing good tips, tricks, and I'm sure the resources which are there available on your website, I'll definitely plug it in into the podcast people will be able to access it and they'll say thank you to you for educating <laughs> them on podcasting and other yeah. Google entrepreneurship. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for your time and stay safe. Thank you. You have a good day too. Thank you for listening in. And we close yet another episode of Masters Decoded. If you've enjoyed the episode, please, you can help us out by sharing it on social media. I would personally appreciate that. It's how we can reach more listeners, and the more listeners we have, the more awesome guests I can get in touch and convince to participate in these conversations that are a joy to have for me, and I hope they are a joy for you to listen as well. You can also help a lot leaving reviews on iTunes or your podcast service of choice. Reviews are surprisingly helpful in supporting the podcast to get to more listeners. If this episode has intrigued you, I would request you to subscribe to the podcast to stay up to date and get notified to the future episodes. With that, I bid you and see you in the next episode.